Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil. And today we're going to discuss a little bit about the Atlanta Falcons versus the Dallas Cowboys for this Sunday at AT&T Stadium. Now the problem that you got going into it is that with Atlanta, their record doesn't show that they're a great team. But when you go against them of any NFL team, they're a tough matchup and they do make plays. So you got a leader in Matt Ryan that does great off of a play action, which is a team that has no running game at all. So it's amazing to watch this team perform because it doesn't make any sense when they actually do. So are they a team that can fall to anybody? Yes. Are they a team that can beat anybody? I would say yes. Now with Dallas on the other side showing last week falling to Denver while Denver just handed us our ass, that they can also too fall to anybody if they do not put in the effort. And honestly, Game was just off with people throwing off, people not catching. You just had an off day all around. So let's move on. Let's see what Dallas is going to have to do against Atlanta. Some of the matchups that we may have to occur to see what's going to happen this Sunday and how can we come away with the victory. When you focus in on the offensive side of the ball, there are plenty of factors that come into play, but even more questions that come to mind. Like, how will Dak play coming off of possibly the worst game of his NFL career? And what will Michael Gallup look like coming off and not playing football for like eight or nine weeks? Will their offensive line that looked terrible last week but looked amazing those previous weeks before that? What will they look like? With Tyra Smith still being out, I think that just goes, where's Terrence Steele going to go? Are they going to stick him to left tackle to give him more experience? Or are you going to leave him next to Zach Martin, our guard that's an all-pro, and then put Collins over to left tackle where he's naturally a better fit. He's left-handed, he played it in college, and you would stick him next to an inexperienced Connor Williams, right now as of Connor Williams. But it would balance those lines out and hopefully kind of give Dak a little bit of extra protection to, so he doesn't get happy feet. But with all those questions in mind about the Dallas Cowboys offense, none of those questions have anything to do with the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons that are top 10 defensive scoring every single year for the past decade, uh, there's all factors that come in. The fact that Dan Quinn is no longer there is a big thing because that was his whole system there. Now, when you also look with the fact that this Dallas offense can move the ball against pretty much any defense in the league, it's going to be a lot of weapons that they're going to need Atlanta to have to even possibly slow them down. So I don't see Atlanta slowing this team down. So how can I even tell you that they're going to stop them? But then again, I didn't think Denver was really going to do what they did to Dallas. But when you look back at the tape, you really just saw Dallas doing it to themselves with Denver just being the team that was in front of them. Now, you'll see teams get beat all the time, but that was a pretty much special ass whooping. So I'm really interested to see what this offense does coming out against a team that a lot of your teammates are previously uh, from. So I think that's going to be a big factor in a big revenge type of game. So let's look on the defensive side of the ball and see what kind of factors or matchups we're going to have to come for this to be a possible win for the Dallas Cowboys. As we shift focus on the defensive side of the ball, there are so many storylines going around, and I think one of our main ones, of course, is the fact that Randy Gregory will not be here. He's already put on the injury reserve for a calf injury, and you know what I've said about calf injuries. They're so iffy. You had Dak Prescott just out for a game with a calf injury. You just had Michael Gallup out for nine weeks with a calf injury. So calf injuries, again, are very predictable. It's not like you can look at Randy Gregory and go, hey, you know what? At least we get him back December 7th. No, none of that. We don't know when he's going to come back, and we're just hoping that that three week is, is definitely just the minimum or even possibly the just the maximum that we have to deal with. Now, with Demarcus Lawrence not being probably a couple of weeks until he comes back, possibly those guys coming back at the same time is a possibility, but the in-between is what we have to worry about. When you got guys like uh, Dorrance Armstrong or Terrell Basham just not stepping up, you can't rely on those guys to get the pressure. So, of course, Micah Parsons is going to have to come back from his linebacker position and go right back into the end position, but you still need somebody that kind of counter him. With guys like Chauncey Golston being here now where he wasn't here before, that might become a factor, and I'm hoping that he can really step up. Guys like Osa, Digizua, they're going to have to be factors as well because now that offenses know that they can run the ball against Dallas, 
Atlanta does not have that running game. So I think that's the only thing that saves you. But when you go against teams like Kansas City or when you go against the Raiders, these are going to come into factors. And these guys being out is going to be a big thing about slowing down these offenses. So right now, it'd be how lucky that it's Atlanta. But it's still, they're going to have their hands full with Atlanta's offense because... Again, Matt Ryan's no joke when it comes to third downs or even the possibility of just playing pay, play action. So that that's become another factor as well. So a lot of storylines, a lot of factors coming into this defense side of the ball. So even though this game does not seem like a big thing, there's a lot of storylines and it's gonna be huge because let's say Dallas doesn't get this. There's gonna be talk now about how the collapse is coming or or if they do bring it back, how it's just Atlanta. So you're never gonna get 100% of the credit, but you kind of still have to do the work. And from what I hear with Javon Kerr saying, this week in practice is definitely different from last week. So I really think that Dallas should be able to take it to Atlanta. And I'm really looking forward to this game. So in the grand scheme of anything, the main question remains is which Dallas team is going to show up. Is it going to be the offense that has been dominant all season with the good defense that has surprised us all? Or will it be the one that showed up last week that honestly none of us recognized and we were all kind of shocked by? So many factors coming into play, which team is going to show up? And that even goes the same for Atlanta. It's like Atlanta loves to play up to the competition and Dallas is a hell of a competition. But Atlanta also doesn't show up on some games and just kind of gets ran out of the house so what's going to happen what teams are going to show up that is again the main question so i think dallas definitely should be able to run away with this if, if everybody's on their game and they're doing what they need to do then you look at a score like 37 to 17 but if you look at this defense not being able to put pressure on matt ryan which has been okay on third down conversions it could be a long game too and honestly probably be in a high score game so i could see like a 34 to 32 possible victory but either way, I see Dallas definitely pulling out this victory. It's just, will it be a shocker like last week? Or will Dallas come out and pop Atlanta in the mouth like they should? All I know is that I'm Primetime Phil. This is Primetime Studios. I appreciate all your support. Thank you for hitting that like button. But don't forget to always make sure you ring that bell.